Hi, Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands here. Right, we've got a slightly different setup to start off with today. Um, we're going to play with the Big Shot. It's a Sizzix Big Shot machine, which it does embossing, it does die cutting, and various other bits and pieces. But um, I basically use mine for embossing or die cutting. So this is an embossing folder. The pattern that you're going to produce is on this side and the dents are on this side. So this means that when I push this down onto the um, cogs, it, it should make a lovely crisscross pattern on the cogs. So I'm going to fold that in and lay on my sandwich. Now I've got the main block underneath, I've got a in filler block and then I've got my two main I'm not explaining this very well am I? You've got the base, you've got a filler and you've got your two main um, plates, that's the word I was looking for. Mine are a little bit banana shaped um, because they've had a lot of use, they're very scratched up because they've had a lot of use but they're still usable. It's an acrylic sheet which just bends because it's so used to going one way. Um, I put this on top and roll my embossing folder through you can see it moving through now it's not going through the reason being is because the width of my filler sheet is similar to the width of the embossing folder so we don't need the filler sheet so I'll take that one out you have to make sure that it will go through firmly but not too much pressure that it's going to break the cranks it gets very cranky if you break the cranks so as we go through we get a bit of pressure I'm going to come back through the other way because I'm running out of room with cameras and everything and let's see what we get shall we Ooh. Sorry about that, that's just really the plastic re um, positioning itself. Oh, yes, I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, it is almost snake skin. So, so far with this, we've dyed it with um, inks, we've stenciled over it and now we've embossed it and it gives all different textures, different depths and different interest. So that's our first cog. Our second cog. And one of my favourites, the blue. It's got a little purple tinge to it around the edges. I'm not quite sure where that's come from, but. And you've got the, the brown of the stencil in it. So, we move those out of the way. We've got a few more to go through. I've set the, the dotty die, the dotty die, no, the dotty embossing folder to come through. And we're going to do these ones. And we're going to, because we've got a, a pattern on them, we're going to put some dots on them. So once again, put the cover over the second sheet, the acrylic sheet, and come through. You feel firm pressure. It will click and clank a bit where it's going over the edges. 
some people say to put them embossing folders or even your dies at a slight angle so it doesn't click over it so we'll try that next Whoop. avalanche so let's see what we've got this time now they're less obvious but they're definitely there see them it's probably because the other dots are there as well it, it takes away because some of the dots are on the dots that makes sense but in real life you can actually see them yeah. um, these show up a little bit better This one reminds me of the skin of a Dalek. You know, like the outside bit. So that's six done. A couple more to go. So I'm just randomly putting them in whatever uh, they'll fit in. Um, all of them I put a couple in at a time so that... No, but uh, you've got overpack on that one Oh, sorry, yes, well done. That one doesn't need to go through because that one's already got a pattern on it. So we might be able to get the last... Well, no. Put these two in this one and then the other two in the next one so we've got a nice even spread of the different patterns. Right, I'm going to put that at a slight angle this time and see if it makes any difference. There are lots of tricks with the embossing folders that I can show you um, in future episodes um, for cards and matting and stuff. It's quite fun to play with. Ooh, this one definitely does look like the Dalek. Yeah, that really does show. Almost like a Lego piece. Yeah, happy with that. Oh, wrong side. Done ones on this side. Um, on this one, you can see them. There's interest there. Oh, that's better. Yeah, you can see them. But they're say so subtle. So we go to the crisscross pattern. And put the last two in. And for those of you who are counting, yes, there is one extra one I snuck in. Because I cut the wrong shape by mistake and realised that it wasn't coloured in, so I just added it to the pile. We might not use them all, we might use, might need more, depends how we go. Right, so back through, ever such a, a slighter angle this time, but it is a, a bit of an angle, but not as much of an angle. I don't think it really makes any difference, it's just if you don't like the banging noise, I think that's the, the main difference on that. So, we have crisscross I'm not sure which is my favorite pattern to be honest crisscross all the dots they both look very effective okay. the last one which is very waffly <laughs> so there we go we have our cogs well, I'm going to pause you for a moment and then we'll come back with a different setup because I need to get the big shot out of the way so I can uh, start working on the picture. See you in a minute. 
Hi, and we're back again. Um, just going to tape the stencil in place now. Um, for those of you who have got a fear of heights, don't look down. When I take my hand away, I'm just taping down the um, stencil so that it doesn't wriggle on me and I'm just using a bit of masking tape and I'm going to tape it down in all four corners just so it doesn't wriggle around too much because I don't want it to, to move one more bit at the top Okay, ready to go. Now, I was having a bit of a de debate before we put the camera back on. Do I do this background in the gold or the chocolate? And I've got letters to go over the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this stencil that's attached in the gold and then have brown lettering over the top but it's not going to be completely it's just going to be in patches in areas so but this is going to be complete because a lot of this is going to be covered up um but it just gives me the thing so i'm using another dauber this one's goldy and just literally colouring in the, the circles. Now I've just had another thought occur to me. Bear with me and all will be revealed. Let's just get this little section done. do quite such dark and then get darker and darker as we get lower and lower. Right, so we're going to go for the brown. Although that does mean I can't do my lettering in brown because it won't show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're thinking we can do yellow on the brown and brown on the yellow. I mean, this is just literally following the pattern around, getting darker as we go through. So because I want to be darker, I'm going to put another layer on the centre bit and work out, and the centre and work out. Okay. Are we ready for the big reveal? Mm -hmm. So we're going to darken it up in the middle with a basic grey adding yet another colour to the, the mix but well black I think would be too stark but the grey yes it will and I'm each of my inks I've got a dobber enough for each of them this one doesn't seem to be picking up very well it's not very wet let's give it a good old stir oh there we go so I'm going to darken up just that little section 
not sure how much that did, but okay. Can we see any difference? A little. So I'll let you hold that one up. We'll leave these two open for the moment. Now just take my tape off. Had a sneak peek. Lovely. I bet you was wondering when I was going to get to working on the base, wasn't you? All that time getting all my elements all prepared. <laughs> yes, I'm liking this. Um, so yeah oh yes I'm really happy with that that's that's really good now I'm going to put the letters on but I'm not as I say I'm not going to be putting them everywhere just going to put the block if I can get into the stencil, the stencils. No, it's not going through. The stencil's too thick. I was hoping it would go through. Let me try another one. One second, bear with me. I have alternatives. own homemade stencil oh. I made it by cutting the letters out um, on my big shop machine going to be difficult to do I can do the S it doesn't really matter what letters you use MN see but the one because I did it from a, a die cut machine my O is not got a centre to it, nor is my P or my Q because it was difficult to connect the, the bits. But we want this mostly around the outside. And I, I'm quite pleased actually, the brown does show up on the brown, so that's, that's quite good, I'm happy with that. a lot and maybe a couple up here interest for it I mean you can play around with whatever stamps you want to layer with gives it a bit of a graffiti look I think that's the, the look I'm going for anyway so let's 
So where do we go from here, I hear you ask? We want... <laughs> I have alternatives to the letters as well. If I can get the jar open. Goodness, that was tough. So if you didn't have your sense letter stencil, you can always um, add your letters in wooden wooden letters which are I think these were from Wish now my picture has its orientation now so I have to make sure that whatever I'm doing is facing the right direction because is the temptation is to all oh, glue it round this way and then you've got the wrong um, orientation so so there is alternatives you can get little wooden letters you can get excuse my reach even kiddies foam letters and um, which you can just paint over um, you could use those as stamps but you would have to make sure you glued them onto the whatever you were using as a stamp pad the opposite way round because otherwise it will come out back to front but yes you could use these foam stamps as stamps but you would have to stick them on or well, trial and error stick them on so that it's stamped in the right orientation I seem to like that word today don't I <laughs> This has just come out the U, but it looks like a little um, a little bottle, wash, um, hot water bottle. Okay, I'm distracted. So you've got alternatives to your lettering, or if you're feeling very artistic, you can always do a bit of calligraphy if you um, you're clever like that. Um, smudges give character that's what I say if it's a bit smudged then it gives more interest and character <laughs> just smudge it all over so we need to plan out now what we're going to do for our border now I've been having a little bit of a play if I can find the right lolly sticks and I found that my ink just tinted the sticks nicely so I'm wondering whether it would be nice to have one alternate colors with the tinting so you'd have one green that's an extra long lolly stick I think it doesn't seem to want to fit there we go um, so you'd have orange green No, that would mean all the all these short ones would be orange, wouldn't it? How do we do it so it's all turn? Okay. Um, never play with that. Unless we do all short lolly sticks. Let me see if I've got enough to do all short lolly sticks. I should have. I eat a lot of lollies. Eat a lot of cornettos as well. That says something about me, doesn't it? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, just do it on the corners, not all the way around. Yeah. Yeah, I like that idea. So it, it frames it, but it doesn't completely enclose it. And I have enough sticks to do that. So yeah, we could do something like that obviously in the right places so we would need to say we'd need four orange stained wouldn't we so we do that side orange top green bottom green and the other side orange that 
That would sit right, wouldn't it? I think. Yeah. Because we're going to add more to these sticks. They're not just going to be plain coloured. We're going to be putting, I don't know, things like this bow at the bottom, maybe. Yeah, quite like that, actually. With the green, two green in the bow. Um, we've got this maybe go over here I don't know that there's lots of elements we got to play with so the, the sticks aren't going to be completely bare hmm? oh sorry I whipped it away I whipped it away too quick now I've lost it in the thing so this this one um, is a, a bead emboss bead <laughs> um, which could possibly go at the top maybe so I'm just pottering and pondering the layout now now we've got the base I can visualize it a bit better so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some scrap paper again I'm going to stain my lolly sticks so we can see what that looks like and I stain them with the inks that we use for doing the metal and I just literally put a little bit so I want one two three four orange that one's already done so let's do these three okay, and I'm going to take the right lid off this time and literally just run a bead across and a bead across until it's soaked in because it doesn't have to be really dark it's a hint of colour you're thinking what will this woman find to, to put on this picture what next I've used lolly sticks, toilet paper, cornetto toppings, uh, all sorts of gizmos to uh, enhance my art. Art we find out. Art we found items. There we go. So this inks will last a long time, but they won't the way I'm playing with them at the moment because it's Okay, now that's the orange, we'll let that soak in and spread out and we want four green, we've got one green already, three, and again these are washed thoroughly and then sprayed with disinfectant spray so that, you know, Whatever germs might have come out of our mouths are not passed on elsewhere. that side because this side oh no this this is the stick we use for the gluing I think so it's not taking the ink very well so we've got another little one bit on because it was pooling at one end for some reason I'm not sure why okay now let them dry a second so let's 
see whether our plan comes together. So green and green and green and orange and orange and orange and orange. And they're going to be right to the edge. We have a plan, folks. We have a plan. And we will continue with that plan in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Much love. See you next time. Bye-bye.